Hey viewers, I've been asked a bunch of times about rear wheels and why they might be off center or might be rubbing the inside of the uh, frame. And unfortunately, there's not a real easy answer for that because there's actually a bunch of, uh, of different possible causes for it. So I decided to put together a video to kind of go through some of those different causes and how to fix them. Now one of the most common causes for a crooked wheel is that the uh, rear axle is not properly seated into the dropouts. So it depends on the kind of dropouts you have. On these kind of dropouts here, I'm going to go ahead and just pull this axle all the way back. So release the skewer, pull it back, make sure it's um, all the way to the back of those dropouts. And it actually helps to have the, the uh, bike on the ground when you do this, because uh, that way they're nice and evenly uh, set in there. And then clamp the skewer and see if that solves the issue. Now this is a different style of dropout here. They actually have adjustment screws in here. So you'll bring the axle all the way back until it hits these adjustment screws and it'll stop. Um, but it could be that these adjustment screws are out of adjustment. So they should be equal on both sides. But if they're out of adjustment, that could cause the axle to be uh, slightly crooked in there in which the, the uh, wheel could be uh, crooked in there and rub against the side of the frame. So check those adjustment screws on this type of dropout. Okay, and now this is another setup that you might encounter in which the derailleur hanger here overlaps the dropout. On this kind of setup, it will only allow the axle to come halfway back on this side, while the axle can still come all the way back over on the other side. So on this kind of setup here, you go ahead, bring the axle back as far as it'll go over on this side here, kind of hold it there, straighten the wheel within the uh, chain stays here so it's centered, and then clamp the skewer down over on that side, um, even though the axle is only gonna be halfway back on the other side. So that way the axle is actually going through there straight and hopefully the wheel will be nice and centered there. Now here's the same kind of setup here with a solid axle where it's got the derailleur hanger here overlapping the dropout. On this kind of setup, when I'm bringing the axle back, what I like to do is bring it back as far as I can over on this side, tighten down the nut almost all the way, and at that point, now I'll adjust the wheel to where it's centered within the, the uh, stays there and then I'll tighten down the, the uh, nut over on the non-drive side. And then once I kind of get both of them mostly tightened down, then I'll torque them down to how I want them to be. Now the next thing to check for is play in the wheel here. So grab a hold of the rim, try to move it side to side. Is there a little bit of wiggle in there? Is there play? Uh, if there is, it could be that there's, um, that the hub down here is loose, just out of adjustment, or that the parts inside there are worn. So it might be a good time for a hub overhaul and to uh, replace the bearings and readjust everything in there and tighten that up. Because if there's play in there, it could allow the uh, wheel to veer to one side or the other uh, within inside the stays there. Now another thing to check for is a bent or broken axle. I've removed the wheel from the bike and I've pulled the skewer out just to make it easier to see. I'm going to turn the axle from the non-drive side and this should stay nice and centered, which it does. Now if the axle were bent, you'd see this kind of going around in circles here, which would cause the wheel to be uh, crooked uh, depending on how it was installed. So if that's the case, go ahead, take the pub apart, replace the bent axle, uh, check out all the other parts for any damage in there, put it back together. You can also check to see if it's a, a broken axle. If it was broken, this stuff would come right out, but it doesn't, so everything looks okay on the axle. Now, if you have quick release uh, wheels, you want to check the axles. They shouldn't extend out past the outsides of the dropouts, but if they do, that could cause problems and prevent the quick release skewer from getting a good clamp onto the, the, the dropouts and allow the wheel to possibly shift within them. So if they do extend out past the outsides of the dropout on either side, you're going to want to go ahead and investigate why that is and see what you can do to fix that. Another thing to check is, is the wheel true? Spin the wheel. And now if the wheel is out of true uh, and veers over, that could cause it to rub against the inside of the stays or appear to off center in some points during the rotation. If that's the case, then go ahead and true the wheel. Okay, after checking all that stuff, if the wheel is still off center, there's still a couple things it could be. It could be the dish of the wheel, which is how well the wheel is centered within the ends of the axles here where they fit between the dropouts 
or it could be the frame alignment. And I'm going to show you a quick way to check, to test it, both of those. And what we do is we just take the wheel out of the, the, the dropouts here, flip it over so that the uh, cog set is over here on the non-drive side. Okay, so now I have the wheel flipped over, so I have the, the cog set over here, over on the non-drive side. Now, when I've done this, if the wheel is now offset to the other side, then that means that the dish of the wheel is probably the issue. So the wheel is not centered within the ends of the axles where they fit in the dropouts. Now, if the wheel is still off-center to the same side it was before, then that means it's likely a frame alignment issue and the frame is actually bent. And I'm going to show you how to investigate both of those. Now, if you suspect that there's a dishing issue, you're going to need to check the dish, and you're going to use a dishing tool. This is a Park Tool WAG4. Um, and before you use this, you need to make sure that the wheel is true, because it needs to be true to uh, check that. And so what you're going to do is, this tool's got feet that are going to sit on the rim on either side, and then what it'll do is, this little gauge here in the middle, I'm going to push this down so it just touches this lock nut here that will sit to the inside of the dropouts. Bring that down there so it just touches and then tighten this clamp down so that it holds that in place. Now what I can do is I can flip the wheel over and if the dish is good that means that this should come down and just touch that lock nut down over on this side. If the dishing is off uh, then this would be farther down or farther up. So, uh, and that would make, mean that the wheel is uh, not centered correctly on the hub. If that's the case, there's a couple uh, uh, reasons why that might be. It could be that the hub had been overhauled and when it was reassembled that the spacers were not installed correctly in which case it would have shifted the axle in the hub one way or the other. So what you could do is uh, check that, overhaul the hub and check to make sure that all the spacers are installed correctly. If that's all correct then what you need to do is adjust the spokes. So um, you put it on a truing stand and what you would do is you tighten the spokes on one side loosening the spokes on the other so it would shift the wheel over relative to the hub and t adjust it till it's centered. Now the next thing I want to check is the frame alignment which is going to check the alignment from here to here down to the dropouts and I have a frame alignment gauge, an FAG2 uh, this is a part tool and I have a video on how to make sort of a homemade version of this. Uh, look for a link in the description. But so I'm going to just kind of set this along here so that it's in contact with the head tube, the seat tube, and then bring this little uh, indicator gauge down here. I'm going to adjust it so it comes over and just touches the dropout down there, like that. Now I'm going to take the tool over the other side of the bike. Touch it up against the head tube, touch it up against the seat tube, and this little indicator gauge should just come up and just lightly touch the dropout the same way it did on the other side. But it doesn't. There's actually a gap there. Okay, so you can see there's a gap here between the end of the indicator and the dropout, and in this case it's about six millimeters. So the frame is very sl slightly out of alignment, very subtle, probably not enough to really mess with the wheel that much. But this being a steel frame, I do have the option of straightening it if I want to. You only want to do that with steel frames. You do not do that with aluminum or carbon fiber or titanium or anything like that. But with a steel frame, I do have the option of straightening it. What I could do is take that distance, that's six millimeters, divide it by two, so three millimeters. I could take this uh, stay, move it over like three millimeters, take the other stay, move it over three millimeters. The hub spacing would stay the same but then the frame should be in alignment. I could test it again with the alignment gauge and check it. I may or may not do that. Well, I hope you this video it maybe explain a little bit why your wheel might be off center or rubbing against the inside of the stay. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give my video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, click the big subscribe button because you get to see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like my page. I post a lot of stuff over there. And I have a web page, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, subscribe to that page. I have my videos all categorized. I have forums where you can ask questions and post stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.